Okay, today I was asked if uh, I had to, if you had to use a bell siphon for a flood and drain system. The answer to that is no. <laughs> the three most popular way, uh, ways of accomplishing flood and drain are uh, number one, the use of a timer, and a standpipe to your water height, you know that you want to go to, and you drill a hole down here about where my thumb is and you would turn the water on for a certain amount of time you use an extremely small pump because you when the water gets up here to the top you want this to be, this to be able to to evacuate all the water that you get you also end up having to put uh, some safety precautions in there like um, tank fittings for overflow protection and you know you don't want your uh, garage floor or your all you, you don't want all your water to end up on the ground wherever that may be the second um, method is called a loop siphon and that would work something like this this would be mounted at the bottom of the tank and then you would basically make a loop and the top of the loop <coughs> would be where your where you want your water height is. The main advantage to a loop siphon is probably its biggest downfall too. It's adjustable. Uh, it's adjustable on the fly. Say when you're sprinkling seeds in your grow bed you can adjust the water level up a little higher and then after the plants are established you can go in there and adjust it and move it down a little lower. Um, <clears throat> being adjustable uh, that easily also makes it vulnerable to somebody coming by and accidentally bumping your loop siphon and messing up your water levels. Um, <clears throat> if they bump it one way your plants don't get enough water. Uh, they bump it the other way and uh, you have water all over the floor. Um, there's still an, an acceptable way of, of uh, doing things and basically um, this is what a loop siphon will look on the side of your uh, um, on the side of your grow bed okay and then you'd have this going back down into your sump tank or your fish tank okay the other uh, way of doing this is to do a bell siphon which would be you know the standpipe like you have here um, I would still drill an eighth inch hole down here at the bottom um, this uh, serves two purposes one if the power goes out the water will drain out down to this level number two if you ever decided that you wanted to put your system on a timer for some reason or another and the timer went off, say, mid-cycle, that the water would still drain out. Um, <clears throat> bell siphons are uh, pretty easy to make. Um, of course, you would have uh, some holes drilled down here for the water inlet. And uh, once you set them, that's pretty much where they're, where they're going to stay. Um, the uh, this here is the cheapest method I have found of making a bell siphon It's basically two fittings like this this is a threaded fitting and this is a threaded fitting as you can see they, they don't come all the way together um, and I don't care how big a wrench you got you're not going to get those to come together so what I've done to make this work you know because these parts are you know this part and this part are less than a dollar a piece and uh, you can find them at most hardware stores um, <clears throat> as opposed to these tank fittings like, like this one here or this 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 baby here this one here cost me uh, fifteen dollars just for the tank fitting which is quite pricey for a uh, for uh, what it does, and this one here was even even more expensive. This one here cost thirty-three dollars, and 
Most people have trouble finding these. Uh, they don't really stock these at Poles or Home Depot. But they do stock these parts, this this part here and this part here. And what I've done, let me show you. I basically, I take a a gasket gasket material to uh, make up the difference. And between you know however thick your tank is and this, um, <clears throat> you can make a watertight seal. I would suggest on the top part to use some sort of a food grade RTV um, or fish aquarium RTV to seal the top and then I'd have the gasket on the bottom and uh, and you tighten it up pretty tight and it doesn't doesn't leak. I've used this and uh, you can build a bell siphon this way pretty reasonable um, less than um, ten bucks all said and done okay um, <clears throat> that said this I use these on my um, I've got this set up here on my uh, my mini aquaponic system um, it uh, it works well um, one of them leaks a little bit but I didn't use any RTV on that one I used RTV on the other one um, and it doesn't leak at all but it's sitting right over the fish tank so it's not really that big of, a, big of an issue for me right now it may become one later but uh, I'll, I'll deal with that then on my uh, outdoor system I'm using um, this kind of a tank fitting and uh, basically you get the stand pipe for however high you need it and uh, <clears throat> there's your bell siphon um, I would uh, normally make the uh, the top of this within oh about an inch to two inches from the top of the bell to get the best performance. This right here is a is an affin type. You know, it's got your um, expanded part up here at the top. But uh, one of my um, garage out there, I I. Uh, I don't even have this part on there. It uh, made my water level too high, so mine, the top of mine out there in the garage looks like this. Um, works well, never misses a beat. Um, <clears throat> you can also create an affin type um, siphon without without using this fitting at all. You can take a piece of hose that the outside diameter is the same inside diameter as your pipe and uh, here let me uh, <clears throat> show you you take a piece of this this hose and you just stick it down at the bottom the bottom of this you take about oh probably about a half inch of this and stick it in the bottom of this pipe and then and then stick this pipe down here it has the same effect <coughs> as uh, as doing this creates a little restriction and uh, has the same effect as the affin and here's a a full scale model of the of the affin um, bell siphon it's uh, you can tell it's, it's quite a large large uh, siphon. This is uh, going to be one that I'm going to stick in a much larger grow bed, but uh, it uh, <clears throat> I've tested it. It really works well. Um, it uh, cuts off a little quicker than what I would like it to, but it starts really, really easy. Um, it starts and stops probably quicker than what I want it to, but uh, um, I haven't uh, made the made a proper bell for it. I've been using a big old honking piece of you know plastic like that, and uh, like I said, 
it's got it probably eight, ten inches above the top of the bell. And uh, I think that's why it's quitting so quick. If I cut this down and make and do it right, I imagine it'll work properly for me. Um, <clears throat> on, uh, I've been given a 29-gallon uh, aquarium, and uh, I'm going to make another one. And this is where I'm going to put it. I'm slowly gathering all the pieces. Uh, there's you see the aquarium and the pump there on the floor. Um, I've already got my piping figured out and set up. Um, haven't got my bell siphon installed. I pulled it out to show you uh, um, the bell siphon. But my problem is, is I wanted to use um, this fitting because it's obviously cheaper. It's a little more expensive than doing doing this. But uh, I just like the tank, I just like the tank fittings better, and I can afford one. But uh, my problem was on this, on this grow bed here. It's got these ribs, and that tank fitting wouldn't fit in between those ribs. I didn't want to cut the ribs because I'm going to be putting 250 pounds of rocks in this thing. And uh, I didn't want to destroy the integrity of, the, of this tank, this tote that I'm using. So I'm going to have to go with the the thirty dollar, thirty three dollar tank connector um, to do what I want to do. Um, yeah, I could have used the cheaper one, but I chose not to. Um, And uh, I'll be putting updates on this is when I uh, get all the parts ready. And um, I've got almost everything except the lighting figured out. And uh, I've got to get some lighting before I even bother <coughs> finish setting it up. But like I said, you've already got my hole cut. And uh, I've already put the siphon in there once and tested it out. It works well. Got my height set. And... Uh, all I have to do is uh, get some lighting and uh, put this baby together, start cycling it, um, and uh, get her going. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, <clears throat> I uh, hope this uh, video has uh, helped to explain um, siphoning for uh, flood and drain grow beds for you a little better. Thank you. Bye-bye.